it's a understatement to say the world is overflowing with AI models. But not all AI models work the same way. Now, some are designed to think deeply before responding, while others prioritize speed and efficiency. If you're anything like me, I'm often left confused on what models can help me with my tasks. So this video is as much a learning experience for you as it is for me. Now, there are two main model types that you'll come across at recording of this video. They are reasoning models. So models like O1, O3 mini from ChatGPT. Other models are available with companies like Claude, DeepSeek, Perplexity, and GPT models. GPT models are the generative pre-trained models that we are all accustomed to and have been for the last few years. And these are models like ChatGPT 3.5 previously, GPT 4.0 or 4.0, should I say, that exists today. Now, they have different strengths and they're suited to different tasks. So what we can do is break down what you need to know and what works best for each. Let's begin with reasoning models or models that people kind of call in these deep thinkers. Now, these models are built to process complex problems step by step before responding to you. One way to think about them is like a senior colleague at work, of course, who takes their time to analyze the situation before giving you a well thought out answer. Some of the areas that they do really well are handling ambiguity and figuring out what you mean, even if your instructions are unclear. So what we mean by that is traditional prompt engineering that you see in generative pre-trained models, which is very specific. It's not always required with reasoning models. That's not to say there is an understanding that you need to know and speak in the correct language, shall we call it, to work with reasoning models, but it doesn't need to be that kind of rigid specific prompt engineering that we're used to today. It can also solve complex problems by planning multiple steps ahead. And it also shows you that reasoning as well. A lot of these models will give you a breakdown of their thinking in real time. So you can look at that and understand not just what the response is, but how they got to that response, which I think is you know a really great addition there. But from time to time, there can still be issues. So be aware of that. Keep thinking like a human, use your human skills to validate outputs and validate processes. And what you'll find they'll do more often than the kind of the GPT models is they'll ask clarifying questions rather than guessing when details are missing. So an example may be when you found work of a model like GPT 3.5 or 4.0 from OpenAI is that it will kind of try and fill in the gaps and guess what you were trying to say or what your intention might have been rather than saying actually Maybe I should just ask the human a couple of questions to get really clear on what they were looking for. So where can this be best used? And I think this is what is really key to understand, because at the end of the day, you want to use the right tool for the right job. But when we talk about reasoning models, what we're looking at using them for is strategic problem solving, sifting through huge data sets to find key insights. So think about reports, research, you know, any kind of data that you're looking at multi-step planning and execution. Popular use cases that you may have seen already, debugging code, software engineers love using these reasoning models and reviewing AI generated responses from other models as well. Now, on the other side of this, we have traditional models, what I'm calling traditional, which are GPT models. So generative pre-trained models that you've used in Claude, you used in Perplexity, you're using ChatGPT, Copilot, the general conversational assistance that we are used to. These are mostly built for speed and efficiency. They're multimodal. If you don't know what that word means, we've spoken about it in previous videos. It is just the ability to have a variety of different inputs and images, text, video, and outputs and images, text, video as well. Now, for these GPT models, they really work best when tasks are well-defined and they don't require that deep reasoning. They haven't got that complex problem solving. They haven't got that strategic insight there. What they do well, and most of you are probably using this already, is to quickly generate content, you know, summaries, responses. They follow explicit instructions without kind of really overthinking or doing that at all. That's why 
prompt engineering, as we call that skill today, is still really, really beneficial because to get the best out of these tools, you have to be able to clearly describe what you're trying to achieve and all of the context around that. I know handle repetitive tasks. That's why you see loads of people using them for, as I just said, leaving comments on my LinkedIn posts, generating emails, generating blog content. They're really good at the repetitiveness and understanding those patterns. Again, where do you want to use them for? Writing, editing, summarizing information, answering straightforward questions, straightforward Q&A. You want to know this straightforward answer. And again, generating content at speed, right? And unfortunately, a lot of people prefer speed over accuracy, which I disagree with, but these models are good at that. And whereas previously we spoke about reasoning models as like a senior colleague, look at GPTs more like a, a junior coworker or an intern. They work really well when they're given clear instructions, but not someone you'd really rely on to figure out a complex problem without guidance and more context. Our next golden question is, when should you use a reasoning model? Really, it depends on your needs. So if accuracy and careful thinking are the priority, use a reasoning model like O1 or O3, or again, any other models where companies are producing them for reasoning methods. If you're looking to do something at speed and something that's not really kind of problem solving or doesn't need that level of problem solving, use a GPT model. So most of the models that are free to access today. Now, in many cases, the best approach is a mix of both. So a reasoning model can help you do the heavy lifting, like analyzing and strategizing, while a GPT model can help you handle executing tasks quickly and efficiently. So an example of that may be that you could use a reasoning model to help you compile evidence-based research on a topic. And then a GPT model can help you structure that into a piece of content for your audience that makes sense. Because the reasoning model is really good, like I say, in getting that research and compiling it. The general GPTs are going to be really good in helping you to make that make sense in your contents. Now you know the difference, let's cover some of the best practice prompting tips for reasoning models. And again, these are always changing. These are seven tips on how to prompt reasoning models. One, keep prompts simple and direct. As we mentioned before, we do not need to be using kind of a lot of the, shall we call it, heavy prompt engineering techniques that we do with GPT models. Reasoning models work best with brief, clear instructions. So avoid unnecessary complexity where possible. And again, they're conversational. Have a conversation, work things through. You don't want to prompt and ghost. More interaction will lead to better outputs. Avoid what we call chain of thought prompts. So I mentioned chain of thought before. Some people who aren't technical, you know, may not be familiar with that. So previously, when you were working with the GPT models or the standard models that we're used to, people would prompt things like think step by step or explain your reasoning. Now, for reasoning models, this really should be unnecessary because these models already reason internally and giving them instructions like that can cause confusion. And if you want to see their reasoning and all of these models, they will present that to you with every out. If you want to get real clarity in your prompts, use delimiters. Delimiters are like markdown, XML tags, section titles. They just help you make your prompts really clean, separate different parts of your input. Again, I spoke about delimiters before. I will link a video somewhere so you can look into that. Just really, really good techniques for prompting in general. And what it does is help any model interpret sections correctly. So it understands what's your context, what is your task, and what is any kind of specific notes it needs to know. And number four, so start with zero shot prompting, then try few shot if needed. So for those of you not in the know, zero shot prompting is basically a very simple question answer prompt with no examples. A few shot prompt is a prompt that has a usually one or two examples in there that helps in the, helps the model, should I say, understand what it is you're looking to get as an output with those examples. So what I would suggest here is begin with prompts that don't include examples because reasoning models often don't need them. But if your task is really complex and you feel like the model is struggling, 
add in a few clear input output examples that align closely with those instructions to help guide the model. And five, provide specific guidelines. So clearly define any constraints in the task to the model up front. And this ensures you know, more precise responses. And again, it's just helping you in that conversation to get to the best output. Six, be explicit about your end goal. I always talk about you know, setting yourself up for success. This is one way to do it. Set your success criteria and encourage the model to iterate. And ten seven, high level guidance works best. As we've already covered, reasoning models perform well when given a high level goal rather than having kind of these micromanaged steps. If you want to get more on these tips and tips in general, many companies have great official documentation. I have linked the OpenAI official documentation to wherever you are viewing this video on YouTube or social media. Lastly, so what is an example of what good looks like? Luckily, the president of OpenAI, Greg Brockman, gave us insight into this by sharing a kind of prompt template or what he calls an anatomy of a prompt for the O1 model, which is one of the reasoning models from, o from ChatGPT's creator, OpenAI. And you can see here on the screen that the anatomy is pretty straightforward, but very conversational. So we can see at the top, we have the goal. Then we have the return format that, that we're expecting. Then we're giving those constraints or what Greg has labeled here as warnings. And then we finish off with that context. So you don't have to do it exactly in that order, but having those elements when you're having conversations with these tools is going to be incredibly helpful. So there you go. That is how to work with AI reasoning models, the differences between reasoning models and what we know today as GPT models and the best time and place and tasks to use with these models. I hope it's helpful and I'll speak to you in the next one.